What did you make of the market, particularly uh, after that horror leader, if you like, from both Wall Street and Europe? Well, the Australian market actually capped off the session and only was down around half a percent, which was considering was quite an all right of performance, considering that the US and European markets in particular fell very heavily. Uh, we saw very, very low volumes on the market today, which I suppose was a good sign, considering it was a day of falling. We had weak leads, uh, you know, risk sentiment was not very good, but we didn't see a whole lot of selling in the market, only just a bit over $3 billion of shares traded in the market today. And it really was the leads from um, Europe, which got our market off to a bad start this morning, with Spain again in focus. And uh, we saw those yields for both Spanish and Italian Italian 10-year government yields rising uh, la, la, at the end of last week um, up to almost that 6% level again for Spain. Um, now for Spain it does seem that the banking sector is the main problem there, the weakness in the banking sector. The actual core physical position in Spain uh, probably uh, only secondary to that weakness in the banking sector. So the market is concerned with these borrowing costs and it certainly was spooked after the yields rose and we saw that as uh, European markets sold off heavily. But today it was the material sector again that was a big weight on the market, market after commodity prices did fall uh, both uh, after Friday session and during Asian trade today. Uh, markets around the region, Asian markets were also lower but we also did manage to outperform some of those Asian markets. Uh, the only gaining sector I think were the telecoms as Telstra pushed up about 0.3 of a percent but all in all uh, disappointing day, but not as bad as it could have been. Tim, Link Energy, one of the better performers on the market. Very good performer, top ASX 200 performer, Link Energy today. Um, it burst out of the gates above 30%, uh, I'm sorry, above 30% earlier this morning. Uh, still managed to close above 20% gain for the day. The energy sector actually was performing quite well throughout the day until the afternoon session. It slipped back a little bit and that was being driven by some of the smaller players such as Link Energy. Uh, what we saw, they announced a joint venture with uh, China, a Hong Kong based Golden uh, Concord and they're going to buy 5% of Link Energy uh, and that's to develop some further underground uh, coal gasification in China which is one of Link Energy's strengths. Uh, now this 5% purchase of the company for around $120 million uh, that translates into a purchase price of around $4.50 a share, which is significantly higher than what Link trades at at the moment on the market. So that's what helped boost uh, Link's share price up this morning. Uh, now, this is really being driven by China's huge demand for fuel and gas moving forward. Um, unfortunately for the energy sector today, Woodside Petroleum was a massive weight on that sector. It was down over 1.5% and really dragged lower. Uh, but the energy sector was where there was a fair bit of company news out today. We saw that Whitehaven Coal Resources and Aston Resources uh, deal go through today um, for that $5.1 billion merger. And we also saw Paladin release March quarterly results, which again missed targets, which was disappointing. But the energy sector remained um, above the broader market for most of the day, then slipped during the afternoon session. Today, Paladin, I think, off about one and three quarters percent. ERA, on the other hand, a little bit more positive news. It was up around five percent. That's right, ERO well outperformed Paladin today. One thing with Paladin, you can coming to depend on that they will miss production targets uh, consistently. Uh, but ERA you, performed very well today. No, no real news on ERA. It's more just expectations of the expansion of their Ranger mine up north. Uh, their Ranger mine is their big asset and it's coming towards the end of its lifespan and they're looking to expand underground. Uh, the Ranger 3 Deeps project is what it's called. But at the moment, we're still waiting for this project. Um, it still needs to be proved to be econo economically viable and it still needs to be approved by stakeholders as well. Um, so in terms of ERA, there's probably not going to be a whole lot of uh, information coming out on this stock other than quarterly production results until next year when they do get some more significant information on whether this will be economically viable or not. So uh, ERA probably will sort of trade on a, uh, around a price level that assumes that this project is not going forward uh, at the moment until more uh, positive news uh, stating otherwise comes through. And if this does go uh, ahead, uh, this could well double the stock share price. You can probably see a valuation of $2.50 or higher for ERA if uh, this proves to be economically viable and it goes ahead for the company.